So today I wanted to talk about something that's been really bothering me as of late. Namely, where is the stimulus checks? And what does the lived experience of a person who's been living without stimulus look like? And what are the realities that that person is going to have to experience in the coming months? As of now, uh, this recording, which is on November 25th, 2020, all of the protections that have been put in place for COVID are set to expire as of December 31st. That means unemployment and any sort of rent protection for evictions technically expire as of December 31st, 2020. Um, the problems with this and the problems that's been plaguing all of this is one, the unemployment has not been enough. It hasn't been reaching enough people. And a lot of people are still struggling with paying rent, food, uh, medical expenses, car payments, basic life necessities. People are struggling. And if you're one of the people in that position, what are you supposed to do when you're making a decision between do I pay for food or do I pay for rent? Because the big problem with the rent free or the rent uh, situation is it wasn't like a rent freeze or a stop rent situation. Like the rent payments are still building. Landowners still have a technical legal right to the rent that they received. And I'm not pretending I have a solution to all of this at the moment. But what do we plan on doing with a bunch of people as of December 31st? who are going to now owe backlogs of rent. That could be months and months and months of rent. And now they're ready to be evicted. With the vaccines potentially coming out, is it going to be where the government just sits there and says, oh well, COVID's over, go deal with it, figure it out. Or is there going to be actual protections and stimulus put into play? Even if we extend some of these rent freezes and eviction freezes, uh, sorry, the eviction freezes, because they're not really rent freezes. If we extend some of these eviction freezes, does that mean that people are still going to have to have this compiling rent just building on them further and further into debt? People have enough debt right now. People are struggling enough. Pre-COVID, I think there was a statistic that was something to the effect of like 40% of Americans couldn't pay for a thousand dollar emergency. After COVID's hit during this whole pandemic, do you think that's not gotten a lot worse? People have probably dipped into their savings and been through it already if there's someone who's been struggling. And I have some data that I wanted to talk about in regards to this. Um, specifically from the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities that serves that as of October 7th, and again, this is being recorded November 25th, one in three Americans are having trouble paying their expenses. And this only gets disproportionately larger for Blacks and Latinos in this country as of the dates of September 16th to 20, uh, 28th. People are struggling. This is, this is not small numbers of adults. This is a third of the population, almost half of the black population, 45% of Latinos, and 40% of other multiracial non-Latinos. And even with Asians and white people, it's 26% of Asians and 25% of white people. That's still a quarter of all white people are struggling right now to pay their living expenses. And some facts that I wanted to go over, just to put it out there. Um, some 9 to 14% of adults with children reported that their children didn't eat enough in the last seven days because they couldn't afford it. Again, this is based on September data. These numbers have gotten worse. There is no way they haven't. And with the holidays coming up, they're just going to get worse. With winter coming up, it's going to get worse. As COVID starts spiking more, it's going to get worse. Something needs to happen. Between 7 and 11 million children live in a household where children didn't eat enough because the household couldn't afford it, according to detailed household pulse data from September 2nd to 14th. 
Nearly one in six adult renters, 11 million after adjusting for underreporting, reported that they lived in a household that wasn't caught up on rent. And again, that's compounding monthly. Every single month you can't pay $500 here, $600 there. That's adding up. That's going to be something that y'all have to pay in the back end. That we all have to pay in the back end. Somebody's going to have to pay for it. And people don't have the money. So that means they're what we're, they're just going to lose their homes. Uh, renters of color are likely to report difficulty affording rent. 23% of blacks, 20% of Asians, 19% of Latino renters said they were, caught, were not caught up on rent compared to 10% of white renters. More than 4 in 10 children living in rental housing live in a household that either isn't getting enough to eat or isn't caught up on rent by uh, analysis of detailed household pulse data from September 2nd to 14th shows. That's 40% of children right now are living in homes where there is either not enough food or not full rent payments being made on their homes. And there's a table here that um, goes over a lot of the statistics uh, by state. Some states are faring a little better. Some states are faring a little worse. You see a state like Mississippi's at 41% across the board. Um, there's some states in like the 20%. I know I saw one. Let's see. Yeah, Maine's in 25%. Minnesota's 23%. So it varies from state to state, but on average, this is still 33, 32% of all Americans are struggling right now. So what's what are we supposed to do about this well who do we turn to when we're having this kind of economic issue um well economists right so what are economists saying about all this well even from fox business we can see economists urge congress to send out a second round of 1200 dollars stimulus checks a group of more than 125 con economists is calling on Congress to send out more direct cash payments to American families to help them weather the coronavirus pandemic and subsequent economic downturn. Signatories include Jason Furman, a top economist for a former Barack Obama, uh, uh, for former President Barack Obama, Alan Blinder, a former Federal Reserve Board Vice Chairman, and Claudia Sam, a former Fed economist. The initiative was spearheaded by the Eco Economic Security Project, which advocates for guaranteed income. The federal government sent out stimulus checks earlier this year as part of the $2.2 trillion CARES Act, which Congress passed in March. The money could be substantial, particularly for low-income individuals who qualified for the maximum one-time payment of $1,200. So, even top economists... And these are not socialists by any stretch of the imagination. These are not far left people. This is the former Federal Reserve Board Vice Chairman. These, these are people who work well within the capitalist system that is the United States. This is being purported by Fox Business of all places. They're saying that the checks need to come out. Now, me personally, I just need to say this. 1200 is not enough. Do you know where they got the $1,200 amount? I will tell you. If you take the minimum wage in America, federal minimum wage, not state, not your local minimum wage, your federal minimum wage, $7.25, you multiply that by 40 hours, and then you multiply that by the approximation of four uh, weeks in a month, you get a total that's, I believe, eleven fifty-two. dollars um, So what $1,200 is meant to represent is minimum wage. 1200 a month, if that was spread out over the course of 12 months, is only $14,000 somewhat dollars. $14,400 per adult. That's not enough money. When you're in a major city, whether it be Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, your rent is up there. If you're someone who already lives there and you're renting, you already know that experience. But if you look at any of the rent prices in any of these locations, average rent prices across the United States. Let's see. Average 
average rent looks to be for a medium one bedroom approximately a thousand dollars let's see medium rent nationwide nationally one and two bedroom 2018 rents rose steadily faltered in the third quarter and then trended higher the national median rent for one bedrooms rose 4.1 percent ending the year at 1078 rents for two bedroom apartments stood at 1343 this is a lot higher this is a national average this is a lot higher in major cities just as an example let's look up chicago chicago average rent Um, I'm just seeing right now, page isn't really loading. Okay. Average rent in Chicago is $1,943 per month for a 749 square foot apartment. By some miracle, if you're in that space and you have yourself and maybe a partner and you're making $2,400 a month, Almost 2,000 of that is just going to your rent if you're getting stimulus checks. If one of you is lucky enough to have unemployment, and that's just for the one month, by the way, that's just for the one month. We've only gotten one stimulus check over the course of eight months. That means we've basically gotten, what, 1,200 divided by eight, you know, we're not getting 1,200 a month. If we had been, maybe this would have been feasible. But we're talking about by the end of the year, if they even pass one more stimulus check of getting $2,400 over the course of, what, nine, eight, nine months? That's like $300 a month on average, like approximately, right? That's $300 a month per person. That's not paying for anything. If you factor in the unemployment, say one of the people was uh, eligible for unemployment, then all of a sudden now they're making a total of twenty four hundred a month. The stimulus adds on; they get another twelve uh, two thousand four hundred for one month, and maybe they can pay back a little bit of what they've been missing out on. It'll be helpful, but these kind of rents are just too high for what what kind of stimulus they're giving out. It's just the reality that's being lived in. That $2,400 check is basically paying your rent for a month. Maybe with some, and then some food. Like, great, it pulls you over for a month. I'm not saying it's a bad thing that we're getting it, but it's not enough. And so I wanted to briefly go over what the plan is from Pelosi um, to actually remedy this. And so she's calling for another $2.2 million stimulus. This article's from September 29th, so it's a little dated, but she's been pushing for this for months, and the Trump administration was just not having it. So this plan was hoping to get another $1,200 of stimulus checks out to people, $500 for dependents, for all people who make up to $75,000 individually, and couples that make up to $150,000. Uh expansion of unemployment as of September. Again, this was to expand it to January. Uh, I know that it got um, shut, uh, that it did get extended to December. So I don't know what the most recent plan is, presumably to expand this for longer than January uh, to provide more housing assistance and pump money into there. Child care and education, that's one I really didn't cover. Um, if somebody is a essential worker and they have their kid going to like not being able to go to school because a lot of schools are being shut down which they should be because they have to be who's paying for child care who's paying for babysitter who's paying for whatever is required or younger um education than kindergarten who's paying for that like who's paying for pre-k so these are questions that deal with the lived experiences of every single person in this country, like average American, right? When you take that average person, this is the questions they're asking. Uh, they want paycheck protections, worker protections and job security, more food assistance because there's not enough food to go around right now. And the holidays are a time where food is a big factor. Um, people are already worried about winter and cold and homelessness this is this is not good 
This is not a good look. And when I when I hear reports that Mitch McConnell wants to drop this down to five hundred billion dollars, and you have experts in the economy urging we need this twelve hundred dollar stimulus minimum. Like I've heard some economists say that they want multiple trillion dollar packages to go out. And these are not socialist economists. These are not economists that are sitting there trying to convert the country into the leftist paradise that I'd love to see. These are people who have tied themselves into the capitalist system very fondly that are advocating for this. And yet, conservative Republicans are going to do everything in their power, like Mitch McConnell, to drop the number, drop the amount of assistance, and just completely ignore the needs of the average American citizen. So I don't I don't have a solution. I feel quite helpless, honestly, as somebody looking at this. Because these are numbers and things that are just outside the scope of one's imagination. When you start talking about trillions of dollars, how do you even fathom spending that much? How do you even fathom dealing with this? Um, so, but at the very least, these checks need to come. They need to come more often. There needs to be some relief. They need to figure out what to do with rent. They need to do with figure out what to do with other things. And I'm also going to say this. I have seen, and I'm not going to show the clips and I'm not going to go into it, but I have seen certain reports that are talking about how people need the stimulus checks so we can fix the economy because then people will go out and spend their money and they'll go out and buy things for the holidays. And it just... Sometimes I do wonder if economists are living in the real world. Sometimes, you know, I, I've been told so many times by econ majors and business majors that I, I'm the, the, the crazy one because I believe in certain sort of socialism or, you know, dare I say, anarchism. But isn't it kind of ridiculous when we're sitting here talking about whether or not 40% of the households in America can pay rent or... For, that have children can pay rent or, you know, have food on the table, that almost, that, that a good number of children right now are not eating adequately. And we're sitting here talking about, is there enough money to spend on, you know, holiday gifts and shopping and consumerism? And it just makes me feel like I'm losing my mind when i when i when i when i see them make that comparison it makes me question how it is that they're the ones able to dictate this it's frustrating it's exhausting i just want to see people well fed i just want to see people well educated cuz i didn't even go into the student debt issues that are going on still um I just want to see people be able to survive. Maybe instead of this particular package, maybe we should be talking more about a universal base income. That's a whole other topic, whole other video that it's going to have to be. But some relief needs to come, and it needs to come soon. Because people, people need this. They're suffering. With that said, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. Please follow me on Twitter found in the description below. I have a brand new discord. Please check that out. And with that said, my name is Anarchist Tara, and I hope you enjoyed watching.